Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with letslearnthistogether.com, the best place to learn game design and development with Game Maker Studio. Check out my website today for my three course bundle to go from beginner to expert in no time. In today's tutorial, we're gonna be tackling two player local split screen co-op. So I've got a project that you can download in the comments below with just two players and two controls. And I'm gonna show you how to create cameras using everything that we've learned so far and apply it to two different sections of our game. So you're gonna be able to set up two players and in the next video that comes out in this series, you're gonna be able to do four player drop in and drop out. So that one is actually gonna be even more complex than this one because it's gonna allow you to put players in the game and take them out. This tutorial is specifically if you always have two players in your game or a fixed number, it doesn't have to be two, but if you always have that number, then this is how you're gonna want it. If you wanna be able to do drop in and drop out and add players as the game goes, check out the four player one when that drops. But that all being said, let's go ahead and dive right into the tutorial. So the time has come to tackle two player split screen. I'm also gonna do four player in the next video where we do a lot more than just add two players. I'm also gonna show you how to do it with just one player object instead of two like we have here. And this whole video is part of a series on learning cameras in Game Maker Studio. So I really encourage you to go back and take a look at it because I'm not gonna be spending a lot of time on the stuff that I've already done several times. Because if you're here, you probably already know how to use cameras and you just want to learn how to put two of them in to have two players playing in your game simultaneously. So what I've got is a player and a player two. They are both using one script called player move where you just pass in which keys on the keyboard you want them to move left, right, up and down with and it just does a keyboard check like that. The first player just is using the arrow keys. The second player is using the letter keys, W-A-S-D. And if I run this, I can move both players around simultaneously, like so, W-A-S-D, arrow keys. Nothing very special about any of that. Then I have a camera object that this is where we're gonna do all of the work at. Now, an important thing to note is some of the stuff we're gonna be doing in the camera relies upon the players. So make sure that the camera is in the instance creation order last. All right, so I'm gonna full screen this code and we'll just jump right into it. The first thing we're gonna need is the list of the players that we're creating cameras for. So I'm gonna say player list zero equals obj player, player list one equals obj player two. And then we have to set the view to be enabled in the room we're in. So view enabled is going to be equal to true and we also need some variables for what we're going to be using the actual camera width height and scale all things that we've done several times before so i'm going to just set them all up on this one line width is going to be equal to 960 height will be equal to 540 i'm going to do a scale of 1.5 then i'm going to create a empty global variable called cameras I'm gonna set it equal to undefined. And this is eventually gonna turn into an array. And that is because cameras are a dynamic resource. If you create them as a local variable or as a variable that is only in an object in one room and then you switch rooms, that camera persists, but the ability to interact with it no longer does. So whenever you make a camera, it is always in global, that way you can destroy it when you no longer need it. For this project, we're just gonna have two cameras for our two players all the time. Not a big deal, but you still wanna make sure you're doing this the right way every time. Now we're gonna do a for loop. i is equal to zero. i is less than array length 1d, player list, and plus plus i. And inside of here, we're actually going to create the cameras and assign them where they're supposed to go. So we have two players, we're gonna make two cameras and we're gonna use two views. Remember that you can have as many views as you, well, you can do up to eight, which is still quite a bit. So if we look at this, we've got eight views. We have to enable them individually, which is what we're gonna do right now. So view visible i is equal to true. So it starts at zero. So the first view is gonna be set to true. Then we're gonna create the camera for that view. We need to know the width of the camera that we're actually gonna be having for each view. Because we have 
two players is just going to be equal to two. So it's going to, well, it's going to be equal to the width divided by two. So camera width equals width divided by two. Now, if we wanted to be able to have more players, we could replace this two with this array length. I'll do that because I'll show you a really cool thing that you can do after this. Now, let's make the cameras. So global.cameras i equals camera create view. And if you've been following along in this series, we've done a lot with cameras, including smooth following, zooming in and out, and being able to pan. Now, what I'm going to do for this is make it much simpler. I'm not going to have any of those features because they all kind of interact and you'd have to do a little more code to make sure that they're all working on the specific camera you want to actually use. But if you do want to see all of those things together, leave me a comment and let me know and I will add it to the list. For now, though, we're just going to create a camera with this function and using all the built in properties that we can access. So we're going to do zero, zero camera width height zero for the angle then we're going to follow player list i negative one negative one for the speeds and the border is going to be camera width and height so that's our camera now we set the camera we make to the view uh, that we're on which is i and we assign the camera we just made so create it, set it. Then we have to adjust the viewport that we're on. And that's because the viewport that we're looking at, so if we come in here, we haven't really done anything with the viewport besides change the width and height. But what we actually need to do now is change where the X position is actually at. And that's because the camera is going to be showing a portion of the screen. But when you change the X port, it makes it so that that camera is then displaying it on a different section of it. And a really good example for that is actually in the manual. So I'm going to type in view export and open up the manual. And you see here that viewport zero looks like this, and then viewport one is over here. So when you change the X and the Y ports, it actually moves not just the camera, because the camera moves already. You're used to moving cameras. It actually moves where is being displayed inside of the viewport, not just the level and not just the camera. It actually moves the view around. And that's the key to having multiple cameras is getting this part perfect. If you get this part wrong or slightly mixed up, then you're going to have very skewed characters and things are going to look really weird. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways you can mess it up and the way to get it right. So the way to get it right for this one is taking the export and doing it camera width times i and then setting the width of that viewport to our camera width because we have multiple cameras we need each one to be the correct width so that's all you have to do right there down here i'm going to say window set size which is going to be width times scale and height times scale and then we have to resize the surface we're on so that's going to be application surface width times scale and height times scale now if we run this this is actually going to work just fine the way you'd expect it to it's going to come in here and now we have two cameras one of them is on one player and one of them is on the other it is a vertical split screen right down the middle working perfectly now if we didn't have things just right then things can get very messed up so if we come in here and take away the export, change it from being multiplied by I, suddenly we have a completely blank screen. So what's going on? Well, we have the camera width, but the export is being too far to the left. So all of a sudden, we're actually trying to show stuff that's over here, and it just doesn't exist. So you have to make sure that here, however many players or however you're doing the split screen, you have to make sure that the export lines up correctly. So here we're doing it, dividing it by the width and the number of players that we have. The really cool thing here is that if you wanted to add in more players, you actually could. Now, we don't have a way of moving them around, but if I added in two more players, then you can come in here and I could say 
player list two equals obj player player list three equals obj player now this is going to be a little weird because i can't actually set their ids i'm just referencing the object so the cameras may just pick a random one to shoot to like to follow but you'll be able to see that now we actually have four different split screens. Yeah, actually all of these move exactly the same. But I have three different cameras here, for four different cameras for four different players, which is pretty cool. Now, I don't know which game you'd actually want to have it split four ways horizontally like that. That would be really difficult to play. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to do a four player split screen in a way that two on top, two on bottom, that way, I think is much more usual and much more helpful for actually playing a game. So all of these properties inside of here, if you get any of them wrong, your cameras will get very, very strange. And you have to make sure that you set the size of your window and you resize the surface. If you don't do these things, then your game is going to look very skewed. So if we do that without resizing the application surface, you can see that, well, it doesn't know how much to draw and it has skewed up our game. If we don't set the size of the window, then we have a different problem. Now all of a sudden, the window isn't the correct size, the game still looks good, but we've got borders on the top and the bottom, so that's no good. So everything we do here is essential to have it done in this order and in this way. Now this project will be available to download in the description below, so feel free to grab that and compare your code against mine. I do want to give a shout out to the Game Dev Palace, where you can follow his tutorial, which is a written tutorial, on how to have gamepad input for multiple players, up to two to four players, which is really, really cool. And I found out that this is actually run by Game Maker Station Matharu, the same guy that inspired some of these other videos I'm doing in this series. So a big shout out to him. And that's what I've got for you in this one. Stay tuned for the next one where I'm going to do four player and discuss how to do drop in, drop out split screen. If you like this video, please leave it a like and a comment below telling me what you enjoyed. If you want to see more stuff from me, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified when I put out new content. If you also want to see more courses from me, you can check out my website at letslearnthistogether.com where you can go from beginner to expert with Game Maker Studio. Thank you for joining me, and as I always say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later. A huge thank you to all of the awesome people who support me over on Patreon. Their names are on the screen now, and every dollar pledged helps me create more awesome content. You can support me for as little as $1 a month and get access to exclusive perks like my Discord server, your name in the credits, early access to my YouTube videos and courses, and more. Check it out at patreon.com slash letslearnthistogether.com or find the link in the description below and become a patron today.